Okay, thank you, Tommy, and thank you to the project the first year for inviting to EUCC to the to the conference. Um, well, best of, uh, first of all, I would like to wish you all the best with this project. I think it's very promising, and you have a very committed team. So I wish you all the best. Well, my presentation actually it's um, a step before the proposal of measures, and and we thought it was important to explain how the the sources are allocated to the to the items, and this is something we have done in a EU pi pilot project. So this project is commissioned by DG Environment and it was a preparatory work for the implementation of the Marine Strategy Framework Directive. So this methodology was partially developed for this project and this is the whole reference for the final report. So the, um, the project team was led by Arcadis in, in Belgium and EUCC was specifically responsible for the development of the methodology of allocating sources to marine litter items and also for the case study in Barcelona. Well, one of the important things, it's known as the uh, four seas pilot, pilot project, and well, there are four case studies. One is in Barcelona for the Mediterranean, the other one, uh, well, in the North Sea, Irostende, um, in the Baltic Sea, Riga, and in the Black Sea, Constanta. But I will focus on the Mediterranean because is well, we are in the Mediterranean and it's the one I, I know best. And well, you have all the documents at this website, including also the measures that they were uh, recopilated also in the toolbox of the Marine Litter Conference in, conference in Berlin. Well, and now the issue of identifying the sources for marine litter. For some items like fishing nets, it's very clear it comes from, from fisheries. But then there are some other items that they are very and that they can be found very often on the, on the coastline and in the sea, for example, a plastic bottle. And, and the source for this item is not clear. Very often it's connected to recreation and tourism, but it can happen that it could come also from the, from the inland through the rivers or streams, or it could originate in, in the sea by shipping, for example. And also another issue, why this bottle is there is due to improper behavior of beach users or is it because of loopholes in the waste management? For example, a bin that falls in the, on the beach because of the wind. So this is something very important to take into account in order to elaborate the, the management measures to reduce marine litter. So uh, there are uh, several methodologies to allocate uh, items to, to sources. And one of the most commonly used has been the indicator items. For example, OSPAR has been doing this and is to allocate a specific item to a specific source. But as, as we have seen for tourism and recreation, there is a wide variety of items that could originate also in other um, sectors. So it's not obvious the, the exercise of allocating these uh, sources to the, to the items and there have been several attempts to, to refinate, to, to do it more accurately. However, for example, when we have these microparticle um, pieces of plastic of five millimeters, we cannot know where they come from because uh, most probably they have been fragmented and then we know they come from somewhere but we cannot allocate the source, so it's a great category when identifying the sources. One thing to consider, and it's very important, is to take into account the, the local context. So uh, we have to know, if we have been sampling in one beach, we have to know the local conditions of that beach, the, the city surrounding, if there is any, or if there are rivers next to it, or there are ports, or there is heavy traffic of, of boats. This is something very important to take into account when we allocate the sources to the items. So based on all this, uh, Tudor and Williams developed a system um, based on on the probability, on the likelihood that an item could belong to, well, could originate from a, from a certain sector. And this was a way of um, taking into account that the same, the same item can come from different, different sectors and not only from a single one. <coughs> well, the, the method is the matrix score technique and it was the, basic, the basics for the, for the method we applied in this project. So the first thing is to cross the, the items that you can see as an example here on the, on the column on the left. 
we cross the, the items with the sources. And then uh, we give a certain probability. So we can say that they are very unlikely coming from a sector, that they unlikely come from a sector, they possibly come from a sector, likely or very likely. I will explain later with the, with the case in Barcelona. So this is already the, um, the experience in this, in this project of, of the four case studies. The first thing is to get the, the, the data to analyze. So for this, uh, we look for data sets. Um, for example, OSPAR in, the, in Ostende, they had quite some data, but we also did some extra sampling on the beaches, so this beach litter. For example, we did that in three beaches in the metropolitan area of Barcelona. Then within the project team, we assessed the likelihood. So we took all the, all the items we found on the, on the beaches and we tried to think where they could come from applying these likelihoods. And finally, something very important, and this is why we say it's a bottom-up approach, is that we organize a workshop with the main stakeholders in, in Barcelona, but also in the other cities, gathering the Waste Catalan Agency, the Water Catalan Agency, the municipality, the company responsible for the sewage system, the Port Authority, and so on, because they have a very good knowledge on their sector, the probabilities that the, um, well, the item, um, well, the waste they, they generate, or it goes through them, could end up on the beach. So with them, we revised all this exercise to finally allocate um, a degree of likelihood. So on, on this table, you can see two kind of, um, of items that they are very often found on the beaches in Barcelona. One of them is the chips, snacks packet, and the other one is the cotton bat sticks. So for example, for the first one, for the packet, uh, it seems that it very likely could come from the beach users, but there are also other sources, for example, like the general household, that could be, um, well, also an origin for these items. For cotton bus sticks, this is quite more straightforward. Uh, it should come from the toilet. I mean, it's very weird that someone goes to the, to the beach to use them, or they could be used in the, on a boat. So here, the, the likelihood is quite, quite strong for the toilet. So the next step, maybe here I will go a bit quick, um, but well, of course, you can ask me if you want. Um, then we transform these likelihoods into a scoring. So the one, the most likely has more score. Then we multiply the number, I cannot see, the number of items that we found on the beach per this uh, score. And then we calculate the relative importance compared to the total number of items. So finally, we get the contribution from each uh, sector to the marine litter we are considering in the beach. Here, there are only two kinds of items. So we consider, well, at the end, we have the, um, the contribution, the percentage from each of the sectors. So here, for example, beach users, well, toilet, sorry, is the, is the most important one due to cotton bud sticks, and then beach users and fishing, recreational fishing. So this was just um, as an example of the way the methodology is applied. As you can see, it's quite simple and it's more accurate that, than giving only one source to one item. Then um, the, the, metho um, the methodology is more complete and consider other parameters that they are important when thinking about measures to prevent or well, to abate marine litter. For example, we look at the, at the packaging, at the life cycle pay, phase, the material, the durability, also very important. Then the, um, the sector, of course, the pathways, this is also very important and somehow sometimes um, confused with the sector, but it's important to distinguish between the, the sea weights or if it's been on-site produced. So the results. Um, well, I have highlighted the Mediterranean case here. Uh, regarding the material, uh, well, no, no big surprise. The, um, the material that is found the most on the, on the beaches, uh, well, as marine litter, is plastic. And in the case of Barcelona, it's 50%. But the thing is that if we consider also the sanitary waste, for example, these cotton bus sticks, the plastic is much, much bigger. And, and actually, OSPAR and the Marine Litter Technical Subgroup, they already consider this sanitary waste 
as plastic when it's the material is being made of. So here actually it's sub-represented. Uh, for the general purpose, also very significant, and we already heard about it, is the, is the packaging. This is something we found a lot on our beaches, and if we cross this figure with the demand of, um, of the packaging industry in Europe, the demand of plastic, we can see the correlation quite clear, and we can see that there are dysfunctionalities on the, on the management of this waste. The durability, also something very important and something we should be really aware of and work on, uh, and work on this. The, here. So in the Mediterranean, in, in Barcelona, 19% of the items are just for one use. And this is, I think, a, a really big concern for all of us that we are using products that they are designed only for one day only for one day, only for one hour, only for five minutes. And this is something we should really work on, all of us. Well, here you have the overview of the most important sources for the four cities that were analyzed. Uh, you can see there are differences, of course, because cities are quite different. For example, Ostende, it has quite some fishing industry, and therefore you have fishing as a source. Uh, Barcelona, it's a, it's a big city and with a lot of tourism and recreation use of the beach, so it's the most important. But you also have street littering, is something that you found all over the, the cities, so some comparison. And as a conclusion, as I said, most of the marine litter is plastic, especially if we consider the sanitary waste, plastic is really the, the main character. Then most of it is packaging, and also is a, for a very li limited period of use. So some conclusions for final users, especially I would say for member states at the national level and also for the regional sea conventions. This likelihood methodology is quite simple, but it's quite more accurate than what it has been doing until, until now. So it gives a more approximative picture of the reality. Then there is an added value because we don't only see at the, at the sources, but also other parameters that they are very important to take measures. For example, the durability of the, um, the items we found. Then uh, the Marine Litter Technical Subgroup and OSPAR um, are considering to integrate this method, well, to consider whether it's a, an added value for the, for the guidelines on monitoring marine litter to apply this kind of method to be more, ac more accurate on the sources uh, detection. And then for those of you who are interested, this working sheet, the, the access tool, this is what we use for doing these tables and these likelihood analysis are available for, well, upon request. And then I would like to, to end the presentation just highlighting the, the approach, the, the bottom-up approach of the methodology. This is very important because we get the local knowledge for, from the sectors that they are active in the cities and they can correct the, the staff working in, in these kind of exercises. It's also important that it raises the, the awareness on the problem from sectors that they are not, sometimes they are not very concerned. For example, in Spain, the, the biggest um, sanitary product production, they were not aware that very often their products end up in, on the beach. And for them, um, being a business image is very important. So now they are concerned about the problem and they would like to take some action about it. And then finally, it also uh, helps to, well, to bring the, to make the, the result more owned by the, by, the, by the local stakeholders and to accept them and work upon them. So thank you very much. I try to be short. Sure.